Hello, Synapse community. My name is Ryan Midgetimer, and I'm a product manager on the Azure Synapse Analytics team. I'm here today with Catherine Wilhelmsen. And for those of you out there in the know, that must mean that it's the April edition of the Azure Synapse Analytics and Microsoft MVP video series. Each month, I join one of our MVPs, and they talk about a topic that's very passionate to them. Today, we're talking about data integration and Synapse. Going to give a big warm welcome to Catherine for her to introduce herself. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you so much, Ryan. I am super excited to be here with you today to talk about my favorite topic, which is data integration. My name is Catherine Wilhelmsen. I'm a data platform MVP from Norway, and you can find me on Twitter at Catherine W or on my blog, CatherineW.net. Now, instead of Azure Synapse Analytics, we can use pipelines to easily ingest data, for example, into our data lake. In this demo, I'm going to show you one more thing, how to query that data using serverless SQL. It's a really cool feature, so let's just dive straight into the demo. In my browser, I've navigated to rubricable.com, which is a website that contains Lego data. Yay! This website also has a database that we can download. And this database contains information about things like Lego parts, the colors of those parts, minifigures, the Lego sets, Lego themes, and so on. Just fun data to explore. Now, this isn't actually a database. We can see here that it's just a set of CSV files. And the important thing to note here is that these files are also zipped. They're compressed on this uh, website. So we are going to grab one of these files, decompress it, and then store it as a Parquet file inside of our data lake. So let's hop over to our Azure Synapse Analytics workspace. And I am going to click on this ingest button here, which opens up the copy data tool. I'm going to choose the built-in copy task. And the first step is to define my source data store. I've pre-created a connection to this replicable website. And all I need to do is type in the relative URL. I'm going to choose sets.csv.gzip. And on the next page, we can go ahead and preview that data. Although in our case here, if we try to preview the data immediately, all we'll see is gibberish, basically, because this data is now compressed. So what we need to do is we need to choose the compression type and the compression level we can now click on detect text format once more, and we'll see that it's picking up things like the first row being the header. If we now preview the data, we'll see the actual contents of that file. And just to point it out, we are now currently previewing data that is sitting in a zipped file on a web server somewhere, which is really, really cool. On the next page, we need to choose where we want to load that data into. And again, I've pre-created a connection to my data lake. So all I need to do is specify the folder path, raw slash replicable, and then the file name, sets.parquet. On the next page, we're just going to choose the default parquet file format settings. And then we can change the name of the pipeline because, well, we can choose a better name. Copy replicable sets. On the summary page, we can just make sure that all the settings are OK, and we can see that we are copying data from a website into our data lake storage. Once I click on Next here, it's going to go ahead and deploy that pipeline, create the data sets, and then go ahead and run that pipeline for us. And what it's doing now, it's grabbing that data from Rebrickable, it's unzipping it on the fly and then storing that data as parquet format inside of our data lake. Now I can click on finish here and now we can move to another part of Azure Synapse Analytics, which is the data hub. Inside of this data hub, I can go to my linked accounts, navigate down to my data lake here, and then click on my raw container. I can see that I now have a folder called Rebrickable which contains that sets.parquet file that we just copied. And I can right click on that and choose to create a new SQL script with um, select top 100 rows. We can see here that this is also auto generated code. Now I can go ahead and just run this as is. And we can see that we're getting all of that data. 
uh, that is currently sitting in our parquet file, or I can choose to edit this query. Maybe I want to type in a filter on the current year, for example, or maybe I want to just choose a, a set of different columns, like name and year. Again, if I run this now, it works like any other SQL query, and it looks exactly like we're querying a table in a database, except that we're actually querying a file, which is really, really cool. And in just a couple of minutes, we've grabbed that file from Rubricable. We've ingested it into our data lake in a different format. We've decompressed it. And now we can go ahead and use Serverless SQL to query that file. I absolutely love this feature. You've really made it easy for Synapse users to work with compressed data without having to build out a database. Catherine, is Serverless SQL only for these type of exploration or sandbox scenarios? No, Serverless SQL is definitely not just for sandbox scenarios or for ad hoc data exploration, although it is really useful for those things. Um, you can also use Serverless SQL to do all of your data transformation. If you are more comfortable writing SQL code than Python code, for example, use Serverless SQL instead of notebooks. So that's an option. Or you could even do things like building out logical data warehouses on top of files in your data lake. So it is definitely something that you should check out and see if it is something that you can use for your use case or your scenario. That's right. Without creating a database or spinning up a cluster, Azure Synapse allows you to integrate and explore data with SQL in just a few clicks. This gives us a lot of freedom. Well, this has been our April video for the Azure Synapse Analytics and Microsoft MVP video series. Big thanks to Catherine for joining us today. Hey, tell us in the comments what your favorite part of using Azure Synapse Serverless SQL is. Again, my name is Ryan Majidimer. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at rmajidimer. If you want to follow Catherine on Twitter, which I highly recommend, you can find her at Catherine W. Synapse is Azure underscore Synapse. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.